second. It was uh, this was at sunrise, and I shot this at 3.2 seconds at f8, at ISO 50, and I used a 16 to 35 Sony's ice lens. And this was on the A7R2, and I used a two filter, one polarizer, and one neutral density uh, two stop graduated neutral density filter, and. Um, I found that using filters it make it easier for me after and post processing to make sure that it's you know to where I want closer makes the editing time easier. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gonna play around with I'm gonna keep the white balance the same. I'm gonna just check what daylight does. Yeah, I'm gonna stick to that. I like it. It's kind of close to what the reality was there. I'm gonna keep contrast the same. I'll do it later in Photoshop. Now I'm gonna do uh, play with the highlights a little bit, bring it down, open up the shadows, bring down this a bit more. I think I'm gonna do much. Check the blacks just till I get a few tiny dots. Okay, we do the shadow a bit more. Do the whites. Okay, that's nice. Now, what I'm gonna do is this is a bit much. Go back down a bit. Do a bit of vibrance, just a little bit. I won't touch the clarity, no need, detail, I'm going to bring this down to zero because I'll do my sharpening after. Lens correction, I'm going to do remove chromatic aberration. Okay. Any profile corrections, yeah, that's good. I'm just going to check if the image is straight, so I'm going to use just like that, one end to the other. I guess it was. Sometimes I miss that in the camera. It's not always straight. I'm also gonna do a graduated filter for the sky. I like a darker sky. Kind of like that. Maybe I'm gonna go down a little bit. Do exposure. Bring that down a bit. Maybe bring that up a bit. Smaller. Yeah, here we go. See if I can boost the shadows a little bit more. Open up the shadows. Okay, let's look at before, after. I mean, that's crazy from what we had to that. And if you shoot in RAW, with no matter what camera you use, you should be good enough to do any of this stuff. So, let's see if I just play with this a little bit. Oh, it's too much. Let's stick to what it was. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into Photoshop and edit Photoshop. That's gonna open it in Photoshop. Okay, it's loading. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I want to edit this using the Collection Color Effects Pro. It has some nice filters that I like to use. This software you can get for free. It's available on the Google website. Just search for Nick Collection. And you'll get that and other software as well to use, and they have it for free now, so it won't cost you anything. Wait till it opens up. Okay, so here we go. First thing I like to do is always opens up the last filter you use is Pro Contrast. And usually you have it, you go to Landscape, you have some of the landscape filters that I like to use. 
these are standard from the software. So first thing is the pro contrast. Here it's set to what I did last time, so I'm going to just reset everything back so we can see what we're doing. So I'm going to do dynamic contrast and increase that to about 30%. That's kind of nice. I like that. And I'm going to do correct contrast just a little bit. Same thing with color cast. I just showed you before and after that gave it a nice boost. I like that. Okay, next I'm gonna add one more filter and I'm gonna do the contrast color range. Now that's gonna look crazy in the beginning, but you have to kinda zero out everything back to zero. Same thing with the brightness. And then I just go with the color contrast, increase it a little bit. Maybe like 18%. That's just gonna contrast for the color you can see the difference it does okay so that's good I'm gonna add one more filter see what it does usually I like brilliance and warmth so for that I'm just gonna boost the saturation a little bit add a little bit too yeah, I like that. It's nice. Give it a bit of warm glow to the image. Okay, I think this is all I'm gonna do. Usually I can do polarization. Let's see, but I use the polarizers. I don't need it to get the blues more blue. So no need for that. A nice one would be tonal contrast. And it just Usually it's also set, so I go down on all these. It's just giving it a little bit. I don't like to go too much because then it looks like you applied that. You applied that. So, let's see before. I'm going to go a little bit down, just so it's a touch of tonal contrast, not too much. Usually it's more the shadows and the mid-tones, if the highlights go to dramatic stuff to the sky, which I don't want. So, okay. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to press OK. What's going to happen? It's going to go back into Photoshop with its own layer. Takes a while. a long time. Okay, here we go. And now you can see before, after, before, after. And if you want too much, you can always go down with the opacity and change it. That's up to you. Me, I like it like that. So, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer, and I'm gonna do a bit of dodging and burning because I like that. So, I'm gonna select the brush, white, low opacity, maybe like four percent. Let's do four percent. Three percent is good. I'm gonna more make my brush smaller. And this is just where I want to bring in some detail to some of the stuff. I'm going to bring in more detail here. So I'm just brushing along. And at 3%, you can pass a couple of times. 
you kind of get what you want. Okay, I like that. Do a little bit here on the mountain to get these colors. Same thing on the reflections. And a little bit here. Here we go. Let's see before, after. Just gives it a little bit pop like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer too. And I'm going to set it to overlay. Remember the other one I set it to soft light. I forgot to do that. Soft light. Here we go. When you're doing dodging and burning. So for the dodging, I do set it to soft light. For burning, it to overlay. I won't do much with the, with the burning. I just want to use it to make a vignette. So make my brush big. Change it to black. And just pass along the edges here. Okay, let's see before, after. Also, just, there you go, I like that. And can I do a, can I do a, everything underneath? Layer, new layer, but with everything that we did underneath apply. So I'm going to do Alt Command sh Shift E. So that's going to give me a new layer of everything underneath. And now I'm going to do, like to give this a bit of a glow. So I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now it's, it's always at 27.5%, so I'll keep it at that. It's my, you know, my choice of what I want the blur to be. So I'm gonna go to after image adjustments, brightness contrast. I'm gonna go up with the contrast all the way, a little bit on the brightness, not too much. And I'm gonna go down with the opacity really low, like maybe 10%, eight, just check before or after. It's not much, it just gives it a little bit of glow. Find and add something. Okay, that's good. And next thing you know, I'm gonna make another layer of all the stuff underneath. And I'm gonna do my sharpening. This sharpening I do it for, I know for print to be ready. So do a high pass filter. 3%, 3 pixel radius, click OK. And switch this to overlay. You can switch between overlay and soft light. But sometimes overlay is it's too much, soft light is a little bit a little bit less. Just to see what it did for 100 percent before, after, until you can see the difference it makes. I'm gonna keep it at overlay, I'm just gonna bring down the opacity to 75%. Just because I've that's better. Okay, that's good. And this is for me, it's ready. I'm ready to share this. I might do just a new layer here. Actually, let me go back and give me that one. I always like to do the sharpening at the very, very end. I'm gonna see if I can just get out stuff that I don't like in the picture. So I'm gonna do another new layer. And I'm gonna get this spot healing brush right here. There's some stuff I don't mind, but some stuff that I find is just distracting. I just clean that up a little bit. Like this line here. I don't know why it bugs me. It's not bad. Photoshop's good at that. This. Stuff that I want to remove stuff that I find just 
distracting from the from the scene you know again you could be really picky and just spend hours doing this but just a few things that bug me I want to remove but if I don't add anything to the, the scene Photoshop's really good at that. The spot healing brush is amazing for removing stuff like that. Okay. Alright. Alright. See before, after. Maybe just do this here too. Gonna go back. Went a bit too close to the rock there. Okay. And all right. I like that. Before, after. See, it did clean up all the stuff that I don't like here. Maybe do this line. That. Okay. So now I'm gonna do a new layer as well. And then I'm gonna do my high pass footer. Three pixels like we did. Do overlay. Change it to 75. Don't want to go too much. Okay, that's good. I like that. Looking nice. Now, the last thing I'm going to do, I find this it's ready for uh, to share it online. I'm going to make a, I'm going to save this as is for if I ever want to print it. But for the web, I'm just going to use the Tony Kuiper action panel. This you can buy online if you want. It's not expensive and uh, I'm gonna use their action for web sharpening and use the horizontal 2048 I mean I like it I like it big so I stick to horizontal click OK it's gonna make a new layer with with the new file and um, before saving it I'm just gonna switch to convert to profile Oops. Because I was in Pro Photo RGB, I'm gonna just switch it to sRGB. Okay, that's good. So now we can save this as a JPEG and share it online. So thank you guys for watching. This is my, you know, I'll have another tutorial next week with any new images I shot. And uh, if you want, uh, you can visit my website, thefoxphoto.com. It has more of my pictures and stuff. So I'll call this fall sunrise. Fall sunrise. Oops. Okay, so uh, thank you.